the Jersey Shore for just a moment. Uh, here is the map of New Jersey, and these are the places that are under an evacuation order. And you notice the way New Jersey has kind of an angle here to the coast. So it's the areas south of that angle that to go from just north of Long Beach Island there all the way down to Cape May. And then there's another place up here called Keensburg, and that's up on the Rare Tan Bay where the water forced into that bay. There'll be major flooding at the back end of that bay. But what they've done in New Jersey is they have one wade, it's called Contraflow, out of Cape May. It's on 37 or 347 and 47, and uh, also out of Long Beach Island. This is Long Beach Island here, so called LBI. Route 72 going in is all one way, and the Garden State Parkway is only northbound. I drew it the wrong way. It's only northbound here up to just north of Tom's River. So they have put their evacuation uh, system in place and just Hopefully, people get out of that shoreline because there is a long history, unfortunately, of many, many problems along that Jersey Shore as storms have come north a number of times uh, over the years. Chris? And, yeah, and uh, I'm here now with uh, Brian. And Brian, people have a lot of questions. They're asking us on Twitter and Facebook. And on my page, uh, Aaron Graham asks, and this has been kind of the big news today a little bit of weakening. And he says, looks like Irene is weakening. True. And then he says, problem's over. Yeah, no, because uh, first of all, yes, it did the core weaken some, but now it seems to have stabilized. The pressure was going up, and now it stabilized, came down a little bit, actually. So the, the weakening is not significant. But secondly, the size of the storm is so big, and as we found out in uh, Hurricane Ike in 2008, with that tremendous size, we know what it did in the Houston area. What wasn't well reported is in Louisiana, they had storm surge come in and tear things up at the coast and flood areas there just because of the, of the magnitude of the storm. So the fact that the top winds came down a little bit, that's good. <laughs> but it, it, as far as the impacts that we would expect up the coast, it really doesn't change anything. That's all about the track. So we're still expecting major impacts regardless of the fact that it's weakened, even if it continues to weaken, correct? And it's expected to continue to weaken, but the difference between 105 or 100 or even 95, it just is not any, any difference in terms of the overall impact of the storm uh, as it moves uh, all the way up through New England. Okay, talking about Manhattan now, Ben Kramer wants to know if you're walking around through the buildings, will they be much stronger uh, because of the buildings working like tunnels. Well, the, the winds, yes, the winds get funneled between the buildings. And the big issue that that causes is not at the ground so much, although you can bet that everything's going to be flying around and nobody should be outside when this thing is going by, right? But but on the higher floors, the wind gets like, like taking a garden hose and squeezing the garden hose. It goes faster between the buildings, and that creates a suction on the back of the buildings and pulls on the windows. So it's not really the pressure that does it. It's the pulling on the back of the buildings. So it is going to be dangerous to be up in high rises. It will not be dangerous to be down and inside away from the windows. So that's where everybody needs to And the to be. safest place a few floors up away from the windows, right? Yeah, although in this case, most of Manhattan is not to worry about flooding on the bottom okay, floor. Okay. So down low and uh, away from the windows. Okay, Brian Norcross, thank you. Let's head over to Crystal.